This video comes from Paint Coach, the title, 10 Tips for Better Colors in Your Paintings. We're gonna see uh, what he has to offer and I'll offer some insights as well. All right, I'm gonna jump right in with tip number one, which is change the way you think about color. See, I get a lot of students that ask me, oh, how did you get that color? Or what is the recipe for skin tones? What is the recipe of colors for this? Try hard not to think about mixing colors like a recipe where it's, you know, two parts this, one part that, and one part this, and you get the color. Yeah, that's a really good point. A lot of people approach me in the same way, like what is the recipe? What is the recipe for getting the skin color? The thing is, once you get more acquainted with how to use your colors, it's, you're gonna realize how easy and how simple it is. And it's much more based on looks, it's based on appearance. You need to figure out how to use your eyes to see the right colors and, and how to mix them. And then you're gonna figure out that it's actually just a few different mixtures that are actually gonna do most of the work. So just having three or four solid mixtures of skin tone will be enough to really make a very compelling portrait. That's really all you need to know. And if you're able to actually use those consciously and with intention, you're gonna get a lot further along than having you know the recipe for every single different part of the face. When you're trying to get a specific color, be thinking about where you need to shift it to or push it to, to get the color you want. Yes, that is great stuff right there. That's a really good point. That's what I'm talking about all the time as well. If you have just a few simple mixtures, then all you need to do is just push it a little bit further in one direction. If you figure out you need a little bit more yellow, then you can add just a little bit more yellow. If you figure out it's too orange, how do you make that more calm? You can add some gray to it you can use your Apelles Blue, and that will neutralize, that will bring it closer to neutral. Knowing just you know the complementary colors, what are the uh, primary colors and the secondary colors, and what are their complements, that's going to be massive. You're gonna be able to really put any kind of contrast that you want, you're gonna be able to tone anything down as much as you want, and you're gonna know how they're actually uh, working together, how do they communicate with each other to the viewer, so that's very important. Think about it as if you're making a big thing of soup and you're occasionally testing it out and seeing oh, does it need more salt. Exactly, exactly, test it out. Put it on the surface, see how it works. If it has some sort of flaw or there's like a major problem that you need to change, take your palette knife, scrape it off, remix according to this new knowledge that you just gained. If you figure out you need more yellow, now you can just add a little bit more yellow to that same mixture put that in the painting, how does that work? What do you need to change now? And just keep moving forward in that way. In a color, I'm always thinking, you know, does it need more red, does it need more blue, some yellow or white? I'm not trying to remember a, a recipe I learned one time for the color of leaves on a tree. <laughs> exactly. You're not like thinking back to this precise mixture. You have just, you know, a few mixtures that you know are really solid, and then you can move those in any direction you want, and the limits are endless, so. You need to think about it in a more flexible way. And this ties into a thing that I've talked about a lot, which is starting out by understanding the primary colors. That's red, blue, and yellow, and white. So if you understand how to mix all your colors from those primary colors, it's gonna give you such a strong understanding of color. You have a great foundation. That way, when you add in other colors to your palette, you're gonna know what to do with them. And you're not gonna need to rely on recipes of colors for things. If you wanna make it even more easy, use the Apelles palette. Rather than having uh, yeah, such vibrant colors, you have white, black, red, and yellow. That black is gonna have just a little bit of blue in it. So effectively, you're, you're gonna get the primary colors out of this, but I like to think about it actually just with orange and blue. Of course, the uh, black serving as the sort of blue. You're just going to think, is it warm or is it cool? And then you can push it in any direction you want. So if you need skin color, it's going to be warmer. You're gonna need more of that orange, if it's too orange, you can neutralize it by adding more of the black. So you can, you can work in this way to just push it anywhere you want and keep things really simple. Reuse piles of color on your palette. Yes, this is, this is great, I love this. I almost never clean my palette because I'm just you know, continuously mixing and blending and bringing things back together. And I save all my paint in the sort of paint jar that I have so that way I can reuse those colors. It's absolutely beautiful when you get this nice muddy mixture of all the colors blending together and it just sits in the bottom of the jar. And then you've got 
this perfect sort of neutral, muddy, brown, gray that's just going to sit in your jar and you can use that to mix with other colors or to bring into your painting as an effect and it's going to be the complement of everything. I mean, it's, it's gray, it's neutral. It's going to blend in anywhere. So if I have something that I'm not very sure about, if I think it's kind of in the middle, I could bring that in and start to add some other colors to it and that will serve as the sort of you know universal color in a way. Single time you mix up a new color, you don't have to start a new pile. Now, this is very helpful to add color harmony to your painting, especially when you're finding a bunch of different colors for the same object. Having them all derived from the same pool of paint is gonna help them all work together. That's a good point too. If they're all coming from the same sort of source, let's say it's skin colors, you know, first I would mix up one orange for my yellow and my red, and that would serve as the sort of basis. So then I can start to add white if I need it to be a nice warm light. I can add black if I want some warm dark shadows. I can add gray if it's going to be more of these neutral midtones. So you start with that sort of one source and then you bring that through everything and bring it into the entire painting. Pay attention to color relationships. Yeah, I think this kind of comes back to what I mentioned before, but everything is going to be relative to the rest of the surface. So if you're putting down a green next to a red, that's going to read a lot differently compared to that green next to yellow or blue. The red is going to be the complement to that color, which means it's actually going to create contrast. Complementary colors are going to contrast with one another. It's going to make them feel more vibrant. And on the same token, if you know that relationship, you can also blend them together to create neutral colors. So if you take the red and the green and you mix them together, you're gonna to get gray. So if you know these different relationships, you're gonna be able to balance things out much more easily. Value is more important than color. Amen, absolutely. That's why I think you're much better off actually just using an extremely, extremely simplified palette using orange, black, and white, and that's it. Because you're actually gonna get a more compelling portrait by having solid values rather than a lot of color or e even even very you know well placed color if your values are off it doesn't matter you need to have the values somebody like Eugene Carrier is the perfect example he uses a very reduced palette but he makes very compelling paintings because he understands how to use the values Pay attention to color saturation. You know, very rarely are you going to be using colors straight out of the tube. So this is a good point. Um, one of the things that I actually recommend to kind of avoid the problem of overly saturated colors is to pre-mix your colors. Mix up the essential flesh colors, have a light color, something in the neutral range, and have a solid shadow color. And if you pre-mix those, you're not going to have to worry about using too much bright color. It's a very rare circumstance where you actually need that vibrancy. It's gonna come in a very few small places. So for the most part, it's not really even worth worrying about. Tip number seven is a little bit different of a tip, and it is to clean your brush using a paper towel. I, uh, uh, what? Well, I prefer rags, but in any case, I don't think you really need to clean your brush off that much. A lot of people will, uh, be too concerned with getting their brush you know perfectly clean and ready for for the next mixture but actually if you just dip it into your you know medium jar clean it off a little bit and and, and go back into your palette you're gonna have a plenty clean enough brush the problem is more often that you don't have the proper colors on your palette in my opinion it's not just a problem of you know making sure that you get your brush perfectly clean but actually having high contrast mixed on your palette. That's essential. All right, tip number eight is don't use too much white. Yeah, that's that's a good point right there. A lot of people will use too much white and black, I think. Both of those, those, those are kind of tricky. If you mix too much of that in, it's going to kill your colors. You're not really gonna get something vibrant. So especially in the shadows, I recommend you just use your warmer colors and a very small amount of black. And then if you're going to be in the lighter areas, a lot, of, a lot of areas, you gotta have those mid-tones, you gotta have those uh, more vibrant mixtures where you're gonna get you know, your warmer accents or your cooler accents as well. So you gotta have this balance. It's not 
really going to end up that you have much white. The pure white and pure black are going to come in a few very small areas. Start with a flat average color. Now what I mean by that is before you paint something, squint your eyes and try and see that object as just one flat color. Yeah, find the sort of simplified mid-tone version of the color. This is my recommendation all the time. You gotta have that solid color there and then you can start to build and develop on top of that but you need that sort of base to work with because then you can start to push and manipulate and see how things work out relatively. So thank you, Paint Coach. These were some, some good insights about color. I would like to add just one last thing, which is that color is usually not very important. If you focus on values, focus on structure, focus on learning more of these foundational parts of painting first, then once you start to introduce more color, you're gonna have a great time. Also, learn about these basic relationships learn which colors are complementary, how are they going to work with each other. If you know how to get vibrant colors and you know how to desaturate or neutralize those colors, then you're gonna be much more well suited to actually use them in an effective way. Feel free to check out my video about the Apelles palette and some basic color theory. If you have any questions, if there's a video you'd like me to react to or you have any thoughts you'd like to share, feel free to leave that in the comments. With that being said, thank you so much for watching and have a great rest of your day.